Hi and welcome to our third series in the SPS Essentials and Office 365 video. What I want to do today is show you how you can integrate your personalized domain name into Office 365. So what you can see here is the Office 365 window. What I've taken into account is I've already created that domain name in SPS Essentials util utilizing the Remote Web Access Wizard. Now there's plenty of information on how to do that on our SPS Essentials TechNet site and online help sites and also uh, various numbers of blogs as well. So I basically, um, in my demonstration, I'll take it for given that I already own a domain name, cohovineyard.com, which I've registered through GoDaddy purchased an SSL certificate and set up remote.cohovineyard.com which is all up and working and now I want to integrate that with Office 365. Now if you watch the second part of our video series you see that the Office integration module will actually do part of this step automatically but in this case I want to do a manual step and verification of that entry so let's actually go through that. First we click on the admin and then under management, we'll click on domains, and this will show me the domains that I currently manage with, uh, with my Office 365 account. You can see this is the one that was given to me uh, when I signed up. I'm going to add a domain, and the domain I'm going to add is my Coho Vineyard domain. And click the check domain button. Now what this will need to do is it will actually um, have to verify that I actually own that domain. So it's saying that domain um, is parked at um, GoDaddy. And now I have to go through the verification of domain uh, process. So you can see here um, there is plenty of information on how to sign up into GoDaddy um, add this record at GoDaddy to do the verification and then come back to verify. So let's actually do that. So what I've done is I've, I've opened up my GoDaddy domain manager um, environment. You can see this is where I do my domain manager for that cohovineyard.com. I'm going to launch the DNS manager. Now once that launches, it's going to ask me to add a text record. So I'm going to come down here to where my text record is and click the quick add button. I'm going to type the host is cohovineyard.com or the, the domain name that I'm trying to register with Office 365 and for the text value I'm just going to cut and paste the verified domain and the MS um, information that they provided me back on the added domain page. You can see that this information is here so it's just easy for me to cut and paste that in. Okay so returning to our DNS manager we're going to keep our TTL at one hour and we're just going to click on the save the zone file. This will basically now save our zone file and make those changes to our GoDaddy account, which we can then verify by going back to our Microsoft uh, Office 365 admin tool and clicking on the verify button. And this can take anywhere between, say, 15 minutes to uh, 48 to 72 hours based on your domain provider. In this case, our verification DNS record is not found, so we're going to come back and check in about an hour. So it's been about an hour. Let's actually test our verification. Okay, so our domain name has been verified. The record has been entered. And now the next thing we need to do is change our name server records to actually point and be owned by Office 365. Now, as part of this step, you need to make sure that if you are hosting your current uh, websites, our current email addresses that you actually look at the hosting your website with another provider link. This will give you step-by-step -step information on how to utilize both Office 365 and other customized websites that you've actually created. Now this is incredibly important for SPS Essentials because when you change your name server records you're going to lose the link to your remote web access with your current provider. So effectively your remote.coho.vineyard.com is not going to work until you add that A address into the Office 365 system. Now I'll show you how to do that later but it's really important that you remember to follow these steps. Because in some cases, when you move the name servers off the provider, you won't have access to these records again. So on our zone file editor on GoDaddy, it lists all of our records associated with our custom domains, such as the at record, the host record, which says when I type in cohovineyard.com, 
what does it point to? In this case, we point to this IP address. Now, the really important one is the remote. So when I type in HTTPS or HTTP remote.cohovineyard.com, uh, it's going to resolve to that IP address. I need to ensure that I capture that IP address and, of course, the host name to be able to enter into the Office 365 environment. Now, to change your domain name server records, it's actually quite easy, and whatever provider you're using, there'll be information here, whether specific information or general information, how to do that. So basically, what we need to do is we need to understand that these are important URLs. So we're just going to copy these. We go to our back to our DNS manager. What I'm going to do is I'm going to return back to the administration tool. And I'm going to see here, this is my name servers. We're just going to set name servers. You can see here I have a specific name service for my domain. We're just going to cut and paste that information with NS1 and NS2 into that box. And then we click OK. And again, that's going to take a certain amount of time to propagate through the system. You can see here the changes usually take between 2 hours and 48 hours. So make sure you build this into your um, deployment model. So it's been about two hours now, so we can actually go back to our Office 365 admin tool and click on the next button. So you can now see that cohovineyard.com has been added and is ready for use. Now those changes still may take some time to propagate through the system and through all the name servers, but over the next few hours, 24 to 48 hours, you'll actually be able to utilize this no matter where you are, both internally and externally as your user's email address, link address, or other uses for an Office 365 personalized domain name. And if I return to my domains management, you'll see now that my cohovineyard.com domain there is active, and I can view the properties of this. I can remove the domain if I'm no longer using it. The great thing here is I've also got an integrated DNS manager. So you can see here, here is my default information for my MX records, my C name, and my SIP type information to utilize link. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the really important things when you're integrating this manually <coughs> is that you need to set up an A record pointing back to your SPS Essential server for the remote web access. At this stage, since we don't have an A record and we've moved the name servers away from our, our service name provider, such as GoDaddy in this case, our remote web access isn't working. So we just basically click on A record. It's going to ask us for the host name or alias. In this case, we're going to use remote and then we're going to put the IP address of the server in there. Now, if we had a customized website as well, so we can also put this information there, maybe an at, um, and then the IP address as well. And we're just going to match the uh, one hour TTL there. So we'll click on the Save button. And now you can see that alias address with hostname remote pointing to my IP address is now available as a customized DNS record in my Office 365 domain management. The great thing about this is now if I go to my remote web access, we now have full access to our remote web access website. So the big thing here is when you go through your DNS management of your provider, make sure that you capture any customized information, your remote IP address, for your remote host name, uh, any type of customized website such as customer facing websites or any other C name or A name information that you may want to populate the Office 365 name server DNS or domain name administration. Now the last thing I want to show you is how that integrated personalized domain um, is used within Office 365. One of the great ones, of course, is our users. So if we go into our user management, we're going to create a new user. You can see now that Coho Vineyard um, domain name is available to all my users. And that includes my link, and also I can util utilize this to set up my external SharePoint presence as well. So integrating a personalized domain name with SPS Essentials and Office 365 really provides our small businesses, customers, or partners a simple and straightforward way to do easy administration.